Welcome to Halifax, a historic centre of Yorkshire's famous wool trade, home to a vast array of spectacular architecture dating from the Georgian, Victorian and some even earlier eras. On this walk around Halifax, we'll explore the town's history in depth as we stroll past grand landmarks like the medieval Halifax Minster, gaze up at the majestic Town Hall, venture inside the exquisite Borough Market and uncover many interesting stories, from the origins of the oddly named Old Cock Yard to the story behind why Halifax was once known as Toffee Town, the home of favourite chocolates like Rolos and Quality Street. All of that is to come over the next 20 minutes or so as we take a walk around the heart of Halifax. But we begin our walk inside what is undoubtedly the town's most famous and most impressive landmark, the Peace Hall. Built back in 1779, this sprawling courtyard was once upon a time one of the premier commercial venues in northern England, laid out as a place where weavers could set up stalls and sell pieces of woolen cloth that they'd made by hand. It was these pieces of cloth which gave the Peace Hall its name, and the venue was designed as a way of bringing together all the wool that had historically been produced and sold in the many small countryside towns and villages of the area surrounding Halifax, a hilly area of moors, valleys and fast-flowing rivers known as Calderdale. It was intended that, by building a grand centralised trading hall here in Halifax, it would spur competition between local weavers, as wool merchants from all over England, and even further afield, were able to come here and take their pick from a wider variety of wool producers. Surrounded by 315 separate rooms which played host to meeting rooms, yet more wool shops and more, Halifax's Peace Hall was constructed on an immense scale with some especially elegant Georgian architecture, serving as a symbol of local prosperity to all those who visited. And today the Peace Hall looks just as splendid as ever, although it's evolved from a venue for the trading of wool into something rather different, now home to an array of boutique shops, cafes and more in its surrounding rooms, as well as art exhibitions in its central courtyard, like the display of the grand sculptures that we see here eye-catching wire sculptures of rabbits, minotaurs and more by the renowned artist Sophie Ryder, whose work you'll see on the streets of many towns around England. In 2022, the Peace Hall even reported its most successful year since it reopened in 2017 following a lengthy restoration, having become increasingly popular as both a tourist destination and a centre of local life, although the venue's journey to this point has been far from simple. Though it was initially successful following its opening in the late 18th century, the Peace Hall gradually declined through the Victorian era, as large-scale wool merchants bypassed it and went directly to producers. This led the old wool trading floor to eventually close down in the 1860s, when the Peace Hall was converted into a more typical market hall. Although this too eventually fell out of favour, as the town of Halifax began to consider demolishing the Peace Hall entirely in the 1970s. Fortunately, plans for demolition were quickly done away with, and the Peace Hall was repurposed as a museum and art gallery from 1976 until 1998, before it was eventually reopened in 2017 as the delightful new venue that we know today. Now, a trip to Halifax certainly isn't complete without a visit to the Peace Hall, arguably one of the most impressive Georgian-era landmarks in all of Yorkshire, which is also instantly recognisable for the soaring church spire of the interestingly named Square Chapel, which stands just outside the venue. But of course, there's much more to Halifax than just the Peace Hall, and so as we now make our way outside, we'll find plenty more references to the wool industry on Halifax's streets the industry having brought immense prosperity and wealth into this part of the world during the 19th century in particular. Here just outside the Peace Hall, for example, we find ourselves in Wool Shops, a modern shopping complex that was opened back in 1983, but which takes its name from a historic street that was home to, as you might well have guessed, shops selling wool. Built on an area of town centre land that had become increasingly neglected in the first half of the 20th century, the modern wool shops was originally meant to be a large covered shopping centre, much like Manchester's Arndale Centre, 
although the smaller scale development that we see today is a little closer to the commercial streets that would have existed during Halifax's heyday. This street leading from the Peace Hall is a rather more recent creation, but the original wool shops is actually thought to have been in existence since the medieval era, best known as the place where small quantities of local cottage industry produced wool was sold by the stone, a much smaller measurement of weight compared to the more typical bale in larger wool markets. That's perhaps one of the reasons that this street wasn't known as wool market, but wool shops. And today, Halifax's wool shops remains the only street in the world to bear such a name. Much like the Peace Hall though, the sloping wool shops is today less of a venue for the wool trade and home to more familiar retail outlets. But you can imagine the bustling atmosphere that would have been ever present on this street as independent wool producers sold off their goods brought in from the towns and villages surrounding Halifax. Halifax was of course the main venue for regional commerce, having existed then and still today as the largest town in Calderdale, and equally one of the largest in all of West Yorkshire. But just up at the top of wool shops in front of us, we can see a large statue which pays tribute not just to the men of Halifax, but the wider West Riding of Yorkshire too who served through the centuries in the Duke of Wellington's regiment of the British Army. Unveiled in 2019, this statue depicts men of the Duke of Wellington's regiment serving in wars through history, ranging from the American War of Independence in the 18th century all the way up to the Iraq War in the early 21st century, the regiment having originally been raised more than three centuries ago in 1702. Occupying a commanding position at the top of all shops, from beside the statue we can see down the hill and across the Hebble Brook Valley, just one of a number of valleys around Halifax which became the home of major industry in the 19th century. Later on we'll return to wool shops and venture down the hill towards the Hebble Brook Valley, when we'll talk more about how industry on the edges of central Halifax helped the town to develop into a bustling centre of commerce in its heyday. However, we now find ourselves crossing over Market Street, which runs through the heart of Halifax and which is also home to one of the town's most famous markets of all, the historic Borough Market. Now markets have been held in Halifax for centuries, originally held on the town's streets around this point. But as wealth began pouring into Halifax in the 18th and 19th centuries, the old market was brought under cover of a purpose-built market hall. Originally this was a Georgian era hall built here around 1790, but a century later in the 1890s it was demolished and replaced with the Grand Victorian Market Hall that exists today, and which will now venture inside. Built over five years from 1891 to 1896, the Victorian era Borough Market was the culmination of a century of development and growth in Halifax. And while it's quite the sight on the outside, it's equally impressive on the inside, looking not all that dissimilar to the way it did more than 100 years ago. Do forgive the flickering lights inside the hall, that's a fault of my camera and not the actual lights. But do also admire the exquisite design of the Market Hall's central clock, positioned beneath a beautiful glass iron roof that illuminates this covered trading floor with daylight. And that daylight also allows us to marvel at the beautiful colours, typefaces and shop fronts of this beautiful Victorian market hall, one of the very best preserved in all of England. As we mentioned, Halifax's borough market wasn't only designed to keep the old street market under cover, but also to serve as a demonstration of the town's wealth and prowess at the end of a century of rapid development. The fetching interior here was completed with space for 125 market stalls, while the outside of the market building, facing onto the streets, was designed to house pubs and butcher shops that would sit right at the heart of a bustling town centre. Now in the 21st century, traditional market halls like this inevitably don't quite hold the same status as they once did. But Halifax's Borough Market, with an array of stalls selling everything from fresh produce to knickknacks, clothes and more, is one that's still well frequented by locals, open for business six days a week. If you're in Halifax, a visit to the Borough Market is an absolute must alongside the Peace Hall, both of course having been specifically built as permanent homes for important parts of the local commercial sphere. <laughs> 
While the Peace Hall, built beside wool shops, served as a home for the local wool trade, Halifax was for a long time known for its rather chaotic and disorderly street market. In the 18th century, the town grew quicker than local developers could keep up with, and so Halifax's streets regularly became clogged when the market was open for business, as traders were effectively allowed to set up stalls wherever they liked. This created a sprawling local market that was difficult to navigate. So in 1790, the first market hall was built to create a more centralised, more permanent and hopefully calmer home for the old street market, in similar vein to the Peace Hall. In 1810, meanwhile, the local government also managed to get a law passed, meaning that traders couldn't just set up stalls wherever it took their fancy. But this still wasn't enough, as the old market hall quickly became overcrowded and began overflowing onto the streets once again. Which is why in the 1890s, it was demolished and replaced by the much larger and undoubtedly even more spectacular borough market that we know today. The eye-catching architecture of the Victorian Borough Market makes it a focal point in the centre of Halifax. But just across the pedestrianised Corn Market from the Hall, we find a small alleyway, which bears the unusual name Old Cock Yard. Now, as you can see from the sign just here on our left, the alley takes its name from the Old Cock, a local pub which is commonly believed to be one of the oldest in Halifax. The yard that runs past the old cock here was historically where those passing through Halifax would park their carriages as they stopped off at this historic inn. But the pub actually started out life back in the year 1580 as a popular meeting place for major local personalities. Perhaps most excitingly, the old cock was the pub of choice for the notorious Crag Vale Coiners, a gang of counterfeiting Yorkshire criminals in the 18th century who operated in the isolated towns and villages of Calderdale on the outskirts of Halifax, evading the law as they manufactured fake coins by shaving off pieces of gold from real money, and then melting the shavings down into new counterfeit coins. At the top of Old Cock Yard, meanwhile, we can see the historic home of Lloyds Bank, built in 1897 on a road that's very busy with banks, as Halifax is of course a well-known name in the world of banking. In fact, the Old Cock Inn was the meeting place for the founders of the Halifax Permanent Building and Investment Society in the mid-19th century, which evolved into the Halifax Building Society once upon a time the largest in the UK, and still headquartered right here in Halifax. You'll find the bank's headquarters, known simply as the Halifax Building, down at the other end of this street, which is sensibly named Commercial Street, as the home of no less than eight separate bank branches. Now, unlike most of the streets that we've been walking on so far, Commercial Street was never in existence before Halifax's industrial era heyday. In fact, this street was laid out in 1880 and quickly became a hub of the town's burgeoning financial sector, which developed as Halifax's fully-fledged economy came to encompass much more than just wool. Further back down the other end of the street, meanwhile, you'll also find the historic Victoria Theatre, a huge 1500-seater theatre that opened in 1901. While just here, we encounter the eye-catching NatWest building in white, constructed a couple of decades later in 1926. But while Commercial Street was one of the first permanent developments as Halifax swelled in size beyond its original street plan, it's linked to the old market by Crown Street here, a wide sloping street that once served as the main thoroughfare through central Halifax. And as such, this street was for a long time known not as Crown Street, but High Street. In its original guise, the high street here looked rather different to what we see today, lined by historic timber-framed buildings that housed stores, workshops and pubs, and which hung over the busy and often chaotic streets of pre-industrial Halifax, a town which may have been thrust forward by the thriving wool trade, but which also developed as a busy market centre and a regular stopping place for people travelling across Yorkshire. Sadly, the High Street's old timber frame buildings were demolished when the street was widened in 1867, a time when the whole of Halifax's town centre was undergoing a dramatic revamp that brought with it brand new Victorian landmarks, like the intriguing tower that we can see just up ahead. This is Halifax Town Hall, which was opened back in 1863 to much fanfare, 
not only as it was set to become a symbol of this thriving Victorian town, but also as it finally created a home for the town's local government, who for decades had been attempting to keep a hold on rapidly developing Halifax without a dedicated town hall. Bizarrely, despite Halifax long having been the religious, economic and social centre of this part of Yorkshire, the town was never officially recognised as a borough of its own, meaning it didn't have the rights to an independent local government which could work to resolve the town's specific needs. During its early boom period in the 18th century then, a group of town trustees simply came together to help develop the town, until Halifax finally became a municipal borough in 1848, leading to the creation of its own official council. It still took another 15 years to get a town hall built, but when the day came it was well worth the wait. This eye-catching building was designed by none other than the architect Charles Barry, who was behind the rebuilding of the Houses of Parliament down in London. And it was opened in a grand ceremony led by the then Prince of Wales and future King Edward VII, before a crowd of more than 70,000 people who flocked into Halifax from the surrounding region to see the dawning of a great new era for the town. The soaring town hall quickly became an icon of Victorian era Halifax, while countless more elegant buildings were constructed on the town centre streets in the following decades. And this served to only further this town's reputation as one of West Yorkshire's premier centres of commerce in the latter years of the 19th century. Having started out merely as a coming together point for wool makers from around the region, in the Victorian era, modern industrial scale wool mills were built much closer to central Halifax, bypassing traditional cottage industry wool makers and concentrating wealth brought in by the industry to this town. This in turn caused an influx of people looking to work in the town's mills, with Halifax's population skyrocketing throughout the 19th century, rising from around 9,000 in 1801 to over 60,000 in 1901. And as a major population centre, yet more industries began pouring into Halifax, the grand textile mills that surrounded the town centre, soon complemented by the development of banking in town, as well as the growth of the local market and more although Halifax's rapid growth eventually began to plateau in the early 20th century, and the eventual demise of Britain's historic textiles trade in the 1970s began to cause a steep decline for the town's economic fortunes. But while Halifax today may not quite have the grandeur and status that it did in the Victorian era, there are still plenty of traces of its heyday to be found around town, not just in the form of its grand architecture, as we've seen so far on this walk, but also in the form of a few local companies who are still running to this day. As we venture back onto wool shops, one of these is a brand that you might well have heard of, Macintoshes, a confectionery firm founded here in Halifax back in 1890 by one John Macintosh, and who are best known as the producers of familiar favourites like Rolos and Quality Street, chocolate which is still commonly eaten around the UK today. Initially though, Macintoshes began as a small-scale business producing toffees, which quickly became popular around the country for what was sold as Macintoshes Celebrated Toffees. So successful in fact, that Halifax even came to be nicknamed Toffee Town in the early years of the 20th century. Soon after in the 1930s, Macintoshes added familiar favourites including Rolos and Quality Street to their roster. And delightfully, these are still produced right here in Toffee Town to this day. Macintoshes of Halifax were eventually bought by the larger Roundtrees and then Nestle in the 1960s and 80s respectively. But if you arrive in the town by train, your first sight will be of the local chocolate factory, which is visible from the platform and the place where Rolos and Quality Street are still produced. Accordingly, there are more than 7 million Quality Street chocolates produced inside the Halifax factory every day, though I wish they'd put a few more of the green ones in the tins, they're my favourite. But Macintoshes, whose name is now sadly no longer present on Quality Street tins, isn't the only thing to have put Halifax's name on the map. We already know about Wool, the Halifax Building Society, and world-famous landmarks like the Peace Hall just down the street from us here. But you probably also know that this isn't the only place in the world called Halifax. In fact, there's another Halifax just across the pond on the eastern coast of Canada. <laughs> 
home to more than 400,000 people, Canada's Halifax is much, much larger than Yorkshire's Halifax here. And as the capital of the Canadian province of Nova Scotia, it's also one of the most important cities in the Great White North. But where exactly does the Canadian city get its name from? Well, you'll likely be aware that many North American towns and cities were simply named after the so-called originals here in Britain, either by settlers who'd originated from a given British town, or because of their perceived similarities to somewhere in Britain. This happened with London, Ontario, Richmond, Virginia, Boston, Massachusetts, and countless more. But Nova Scotia's Halifax wasn't actually named because of a specific link with the Yorkshire town of Halifax. Rather, it was named after a man named George Montague Dunk, who was the second Earl of Halifax, and a so-called father of the colonies. During the British settlement of North America, the province of Nova Scotia, which juts out into the Atlantic Ocean, became a major landing ground for ships arriving from Britain, most docking in a natural haven beside a peninsula that quickly became a point of major settlement. This peninsula soon became home to the town of Halifax, which was founded in 1749 and named after the second Earl of Halifax, as at the time of its founding, he held the office of President of the Board of Trade, playing a major role in Britain's links with overseas nations and its growing number of colonies. So unfortunately, there's nothing concrete linking Halifax over in Canada with Halifax here in West Yorkshire. Just do remember to double check your sat nav when you punch in the name Halifax. The drive could be a lot longer and a lot wetter than you might be hoping for. Now, around the time that Canada's Halifax was founded in 1749, the original here in Yorkshire was quietly beginning its rise to industrial stardom. At the time, Halifax was still a fairly small place, home to around 5,000 people and without any of the grand Georgian or Victorian architecture that dominates the town today. But here, we've ventured into the western edge of the town centre home to a small network of cobbled roads that are slightly more reminiscent of Halifax of yesteryear. This area was rather more industrial than the commercially focused streets of the town centre, although the majority of the buildings around us were indeed built in the 19th and 20th centuries, but not all of them. Tucked away on the edge of the town centre here, we find one of the oldest buildings in all of Halifax, the imposing Halifax Minster a grand parish church which is home to more than 900 years of history. It's thought that the very first church built here in Halifax was constructed sometime in the early 12th century, and some parts of that original building do actually survive to this day, in the churchyard and incorporated into the stonework of the modern church. The church that we see today, though, was built slightly more recently in the 15th century, and it was constructed on a grand scale to replace the older medieval church and to provide enough capacity for the Christian worshippers in the parish of Halifax, which encompassed a vast area including not just the town, but swathes of countryside for miles around too. This made Halifax a major religious centre in the region, and the size of the church, on a par with some cathedrals even, was a symbol of the town's significance for centuries long before the landmarks of its industrial heyday came to the fore. And it's for this reason that the church is known as Halifax Minster, Minster being an honorific title conferred to churches of great significance around England. It's fair to say then that Halifax is a town with a wealth of historic significance wherever you look from its spectacular Peace Hall to its architecturally splendid Borough Market, and to this historic Minster too. But sadly, having explored all of those landmarks and more of the town's history, it's here in the parish churchyard that we've now come to the end of our walk around Halifax. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're now looking forward to making a visit to Halifax for yourself sometime soon.